Um, so defensive wise, uh, I feel like we did a really good job as a unit. We all felt like we, you know, we've, you know, done what our coaches taught us to do. We trusted our training and um, came out with a win. Just, I mean, uh, how impressive has it been the way that the team stayed grounded? It really is in any spectrum of athletics that easy to overlook an opponent, look ahead to a future game. So how impressive has it been that you guys have, uh, you know, respected your opponents and, uh, you know, kept that weekly focus? You know, we, uh, there's a there's a uh, little motto that our coaches always, they always repeat, you know, respect all, you know, fear none. And, you know, I, I feel like our coaches as a defensive uh, unit, they do a good job on keeping us, uh, our eyes on, you know our weeks uh, that week's opponent. You know we don't really try to look ahead. Um, we're aware of who's ahead, but our, our main focus is always you know the team that we have in front of us. It would appear to you in this defense that you're in a really good spot for you to play. That if your physical match is perfect. Would you agree with that? And tell us a little bit about playing this, that position. Um, you know I've I've been having my hand on the ground all my life. You know playing football uh, as a DN and. Came out here, you know, Coach Wells and them told me that, you know, this is a complex position that, you know, it, it, it will fit you. And so spring ball, you know, I thought it would, it would be a test run and it worked out great. So, you know, I've, I feel like, you know, I'm just another 1-11th on the, on the team as well as in defense. I feel like there's every position is, is critical and we have, you know, the perfect guys for each position that we have on the defense. So hell, I think that helps out a lot. You're a team, and you win as a team, and all this. But does, in some ways, do you feel like sometimes the defense gets a little overlooked because the offense is doing all this stuff for scoring points, and maybe they mention your three and out stuff, but they mm -hmm. don't maybe mention enough about the defense. Yeah, you know we, you know we, we, you know the recognition we get, we appreciate it, but uh, you know our our main mission is to reach our goals as a defensive unit, and also just to get the ball back into our offensive hands, you know, as as quick as possible. So. It seems like, especially the last few weeks, the defense has been really, really just on top of things. How close is this defense to reaching its maximum potential this season? Um, you know, each game, we, I feel like, you know, it exposes the strength of our defense, you know, and and to be honest, I don't think we've we've played our best defensive game yet. You know, I don't, I, I know it's, it's going to be soon. You know, we, we aim for it to be every week, you know, and if our we if this week's our best week, uh, our best game, then next week will be even a better game. So that's really what 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 we try to do, and just try to reach our goals every week. So that's it. well, your rushing defensive stats have gotten better every single week, and that's I know that's one of the main things you always go out to stop the run, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we our main goal is to never let the offense run down our the heart of our defense, and. Uh, that that what comes into play is us trusting our coaches. Uh, Coach Patterson, he does a real good job on coaching us on, you know, our defensive schemes on stopping the run, and which every team uh, every team is different. So he does a really good job on giving us different jobs every week and coaching us up on it. Is is it Logan Lee who plays behind you? Yes, sir. And, yes. and, and we see him making plays when he gets a chance to go mm -hmm. in. So, so that position, like we were talking about before, must really be in a spot that can really be a highlight position. Yeah. It, uh, Logan, you know, he, I don't like to call him my backup. I like to call him, you know, uh, just just another B-backer. You know, I, he, he, he's just as good as anybody else on his defense to me. You know, he, he brings a lot to the table just as the rest of the defense. So um, when he comes in, you know, I, I'm excited. You know, I, I love seeing him play. You know, and especially you can't, one guy can't play every single play all four quarters, you know, and it's feasible, but it's really hard. So it really helps to have Logan there too. You know, just me and Logan in the B backer room, it's, 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 you can't nobody, you can't get to know him anymore, you know. He's just me and him in that room as long as Coach Unga. So it, it, I, I like having him with me too. It's cool. Have you, uh, have you been able to watch Colorado State much? I know it's early in the week, but what do you know about them? Um, don't know much about them yet. You know, we're, uh, we just we, we finally put uh, last week's game 
to rest this morning. And we'll, uh, right when I leave this room, we'll walk into Coach Patterson's room and we'll start, you know, get the game plan and see how Colorado State is and what we can do against him. You were, I guess, what, on the sidelines watching last year's game, right? When they played, or were you here yet? Or Yes, I, I was here last fall, but I I could attend games, only, but I could only go on the stands, couldn't okay. be on the sidelines. So. But, did you, but Colorado State is known, I mean, they're, they're right now, I think, one of the top 20 passing teams in the nation right now. And they've got oh, a decent really? running back, but oh, one okay. of the running backs back from last year and stuff. So. Yeah, you know, I I don't know much about him yet, but... You know, you're the first to tell me that. Uh, now I'm excited. You know, uh, just like every week, we'll just learn our opponents, see what we can do against them. How's your time at USU? How are you liking it? Oh man, I love it. It's uh, it really brings something new every day. You know, I I feel like you know I'm still getting used to the place. You know, it, it's been really what it is, just the weather. You know, it's coming from Texas, it's a big <laughs> climate change, but. Yeah. <laughs> see more weather. Yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, so I spent the winter here last year and and it was cold to me, but everybody said that I lucked out. And it wasn't a bad winter last year, <laughs> so we'll see how this one goes. <laughs> Tifa, you said you guys haven't reached your full potential yet, and this might sound like an ignorant question, but what else more do you guys have to do to reach your full potential to defense? Um, I would say is just more focus. You know, that's I, I think that's something we can really do. Uh, what do you mean by that's, that? That's something. Um, our coaches, they, they like to tell us to be, you know, football junkies, you know, just to just to invest more. If you can invest more, uh, also improve in, in our studies, uh, in our school academics, you know, that that helps it, it. Every little thing that you do that you do throughout the week, it it just it pays off on, on game day. You know, if you handle academics, you know, it's just it's just less stress on you. You don't have to worry about anything else except the game. And once you ha handle academics, you have time to focus more on to football and, you know, studying the other opponents. So it, there, there's a lot of little things that we, that we can do. You know, it's the little things that matter the most to us. So I feel like that, that's one thing that we can improve. So. You didn't get the pick six this game, but, um, but you got one earlier. Is that still your highlight play, or do you have a favorite play or something you remember this year more than any other where you really had a lot of fun? Um, <clears throat> to me, uh, yeah, I, I like the pick six. It, it was cool, but I, I, I really liked the uh, Michigan State's game, just the whole game. That was, every play out there was my favorite play because sitting out one year, it, it, it can kill you. You know, it, it just teases you. And then just to finally be back out there on the field, it, it was cool. Does that really tease you it. then how close that game was and now you didn't win that game? You guys, or does that bother you? Okay. Yeah, you know, I feel like everybody on the team can look back on the look back at the film on the Michigan State and just you know, it's like man, I could have done it differently. But you know, we there's a lot of things that we could learn from from Michigan State as well as everybody every other game that we played. So you know, I, I feel like that was a good uh, lesson for us to you know to to go off of. So. All right, so for the offense, I mean, obviously we scored a lot of points at the end of the game. And I mean, when you watch the recap of the game, all of our negative plays and the negative things that happened, it was just us doing it to ourselves. And uh, looking back at the whole season, I think that's been the story of the season is this offense. I mean, we you guys have seen we have an amazing offense and we haven't reached its potential yet because our mistakes are just from ourselves. And if we can limit those, which we have done pretty well this season, then this offense is going to keep rolling. I mean, just how much does it mean as an underclassman to send a seniors off in a performance <laughs> like that? I mean, you made mistakes, but you still had 800 yards of total offense, even with a slow start. So, yeah, how's it like to, to send the seniors out like that? Yeah, you know, you can just, I remember before the game, I was looking into the eyes of all the seniors, and you can just tell it's, there's a different sense of passion when you realize this is my last time playing in the Maverick Stadium. And I mean, as an underclassman, 
uh, I had the opportunity to, you know, rally the underclassmen, say, hey guys, you know, it's time to do it for these seniors, let's send them out right. The numbers of this team's putting up are crazy. I mean, 800 yards of offense. What's been so different so different about this offense than, than other offenses you've played in, in the past? Um, two things. I'd say we are experienced. This is our second year in the offense. And depth in every position where if someone's tired, especially with how fast we play, there's another guy ready to go. We, in the past, I don't feel like we've had nearly as much depth as we have. I mean, you, you can, I don't even need to name it. You, we have two running backs that are balling out. We have four or five receivers. And we have six offensive linemen that can rotate in and play. I mean, Carson's there, I'm there. Jordan's there, Henry's there. I mean, it's, there's depth. And I think that is really helping us because, like I said, the, the offense is so fast that you need a breather and there's someone there ready to step in. <laughs> how, how proud are you that you're a part of a team that's the number one scoring team in the nation and had an 800-yard game and things like that? Um, I mean, obviously, it's, it's just fun. <laughs> I don't know any other way to put it other than playing on this offense. Is, it's fun. And I mean, I'm sure for you guys watching the game, if you blink, you miss something. I mean, I, if I blink, I miss a play call, so I can't even blink either. <laughs> it's because we're moving, we're, we're going pretty quick. <laughs> I'm just curious, how's that hand feeling right now? Perfect. Couldn't be better. That's a, it was an amazing recovery from surgery to go that fast. I mean, was this the best scenario that they gave you that could have happened or, or what? Yeah, I mean, I never broken a hand before, so I didn't know how long it was going to be or whatnot, but I mean, it was crazy fast how I just started feeling good and they said, let's go, and I was fine. <laughs> it, it seemed like you were, I mean, you missed, what, a couple of weeks and then next thing you know, you're, you're in the end zone catching a touchdown. Yeah. Was that one of your few first plays back, wasn't it? Okay. Yeah, that was the, uh, what was that, the New Mexico game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was told I was going to play limited amounts of plays and I didn't play that much, but luckily, got to play to go to the end zone, so I took it. <laughs> you had you, you'd been in a couple of plays before that? Yeah, no, yeah. Not many, though. Yeah, not many. Okay. I was pretty limited that game. Dax, the, the slow start that you guys got off to against San Jose State, there probably wasn't any sense of worry, was there? I mean, were you guys pretty calm? Like, it would just give us a couple of minutes, we're going to be right back into it. Yeah, and I mean, that goes back to how experienced we are, and we know what we can do on offense, and we saw what we did wrong. I mean, it was mental mistakes, false starts, and whatnot. Um, but Coach Yost does a good job emphasizing starting fast, and we didn't do that against San Jose, and we can't do that again for the rest of the year. I mean, there's teams coming up that are that if we have a slow start, it's going to be a hard time catching up. So I'm sure that this week's practice will work on starting fast, and we can't have mental mistakes like we did. So Jordan Love won his sixth Mountain West Conference Player of the Week award. It's ridiculous. Um, what's it like playing with the quarterback who seems so calm in the pocket? We don't know what he's like in the huddle or lack of huddle, but maybe on the sideline. Just what is his presence like for you guys uh, on the sideline and on the field? Uh, I think that calmness you see when he's in the pocket, I think he has, that's how he is 24-7. I don't think I've ever seen him anxious or angry happy or sad. <laughs> I mean, he's just mellow, perfect, which is what you need from a QB. I mean, he he's fun to rally behind because he does rally the troops. He tells us, you know, we're going to go score. And when, and when we do score, that's when you see him happy. But I mean, if something negative happens, it's you don't see some sort of stress on him, you know. Is he as competitive, though? I mean, I, I guess he's just no emotion, but do you see any competitiveness in him? Or is he pretty? Yeah, no, he's, he's competitive. I mean, he Every time we go out um, for a drive, he rallies us, says we're going to go down and score, or let's get this first down, you know, and that's what you need from a QB just to rally us. Unlike Tifa, you played Colorado State before. Maybe you haven't started to study him much either, mm -hmm. but you know in general that's the same coach, a lot of the same coaches there, what the games have been like with Colorado State. They haven't been easy games or good games for the Aggies. Yeah. Um, just like Tipa said, um, 
Colorado State film starting right after this. Um, but in the past, they've they've been a challenge for us, and I know we're we're not going to look past them. This is a big game for us. Uh, preseason, you guys are picked fifth in the Mountain Division, and so you've obviously really exceeded most of the media's expectations and the general public's expectations. But as far as you personally and as a team, have you guys met the expectations that you had before the season? Uh, our expectation is to be Mountain West champs, so that's what we were trying to do, and we're not there yet. Did you think that this, I mean, did you know that this team, especially this offense, could be this good at this point of the season? Um, you know, in the summer and spring, I remember looking left and right and seeing some players. I'm like, man, we got some serious, we got some explosive players everywhere, and Coach Yost and all the other offensive coaches have done a great job using what we've ha what we have, and making a really explosive offense. And yeah, I mean it's it's been a journey, it's been a ride, and it's been fun just taking it with the team. <laughs> Same question he asked Tifa. Um, have you guys met your peak or your expectation offensively? And if so, how not? I don't think so. Um, like I said, just eliminating mental mistakes. I mean, we had what a couple false starts, a couple holding calls and that's just we're hurting ourselves and if we can eliminate those then we'll keep rolling well just coming off the um, San Jose State win I thought we played um, really good on uh, offense and defense there's some things on special teams we certainly need to get cleaned up and get it cleaned up in a hurry and and um, we'll get our players' attention on that because it's already gotten our coaches' attention. Um, we've got to we've got to be much much uh, more sound and better in our uh, special teams operations. We we spend way too much time um, in uh, in every one of those phases, um, and that's something that um, you know, I think we take a lot of pride in around here. And so um, committed to uh, to making that look a lot better and. Uh, to play a lot better, but you know, there's a lot of um, a lot of positives coming out of the San Jose State game. You know, first and foremost, you played your starters uh, two and a half quarters and uh, played that well on defense and played that well on offense. I think that's really good. Um, at that point, we put in a bunch of uh, guys that I thought came in and played hard. Um, you know, a lot of those guys that we came in and we played with late in the game um, were actually on scout team during the week and we're not in meetings and so um, you know it's uh, interesting to see how games go at the end and um, so but I thought those kids uh, came in and I thought they played pretty hard and uh, I thought we had a few old linemen play pretty good at the end uh, some young guys but um, I thought defensively Fuale Lua played excellent um, he's really playing at a high level right now Chris Unga played well um, uh, at Awale Adoye. Um, David Woodward's been very consistent over the last month. Um, I thought Fortenberry played well, very well. Um, you know, offensively, um, you know, Jordan Love played uh, really good, excellent. Uh, Darwin and, and Gerald Bright continue to be a great one two punch for us. Tarver had a big senior day um, catching the football. Uh, Dax and Carson both played well. I mean, I sound like a broken record. Those guys have played well for for a while. I thought DJ Nelson played very well, blocked very good. Uh, Vons and Jordan Nathan, they've all been playing real good. So we've stayed healthy. We came out of it uh, pretty healthy. And so with that and only playing two and a half quarters, I think that was good for us. So uh, on to Colorado State, um, and I, it's round seven uh, for us. And the biggest thing um, as you look ahead is and, you know, I, I know that's a uh, it's a tough place to win. They always play well there. Um, we haven't won there since 2012. Um, we're 0 for the last two um, times in uh, in Fort Collins. Obviously, it's a new stadium. I understand that, um, and it'll be Senior Day, so they will be um, emotional, and um, they've got very talented young men, and um, I, it's a team that um, has talent, and they can rally together. And I think all we have to do is flip on the first half um, where it looked like Colorado State was playing Logan Junior High. There's no such thing, so nobody write me up on that. Okay, it's Mount Logan here. Okay, so 
Uh, we looked that bad last year in the first half, played them fairly close in the second half. But it's like, you know, everybody wants to say, oh, you played close in the second half. And, you know, it was pretty much a dead game. Well, guess what? We spotted them 21. You can't spot a good team 21 like that. And that's kind of the same thing that I feel like in some of our games this year, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, they played good in the second half. Well, you, you know, whatever, you know. So uh, I just know they, they, uh, they, their D line beat us up, their linebackers beat us up. We couldn't do anything on offense and we couldn't communicate to save our lives on defense and gave them some walk off touchdowns last year. And uh, it was um, embarrassing, to be real honest with you, the first half we played against them last year. So, um, you know, I know that that already has. I heard the captains talking about it this morning, already gotten our guys' attention. But, um, you know, Mike Bobo and, and that staff is a veteran staff. I have a lot of respect for them, and they've got talented young men. So, um, with that, I'll go ahead and open up uh, for some questions. Um, the the inevitable question comes up this week about, you know, your the emotions and the, the want to and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you've told us every single week that this team gets ready to play and ready to play. It really gets challenged. I mean, right now, Coach, you've got your emotions really went out for seniors. You've got the schedule. I mean, everybody's talking about schedule yeah. and things like that. It's a, it's a kind of a little bit of a tough situation, yeah. isn't it? Well, it's a tough situation for you, Al. Um, it's, it's not for us because we're not talking about the schedule. We're talking about Colorado State. It's round seven. Uh, this has got our short-term focus. We've been very good um, all year. And uh, there's no reason to believe that the, our leaders are going to allow us to do anything else. It's Colorado State. Like I just said, I mean, we, we remember last year, that first week in October, I think we played them, maybe the second week in October, early in October, um, we got embarrassed. They, they, uh, they got after us. Uh, in the first half and, and a well-earned win. And um, so I have a lot of respect for Colorado State. Our players do. I know that. Um, and this is, uh, this is the short-term focus this Saturday at noon um, in Fort Collins and a, ch a challenge for us to go on the road uh, and play. I do not think we really emptied the emotional tank. I, I respectfully disagree with you on that because oh, yeah. senior – no, 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 because senior day – our guys were done playing in the middle of the third quarter. They were done. For the last real-time hour on the field, uh, they were over with me drinking chicken broth and, and water and Gatorade. I mean, they, they, they weren't playing. I mean, we were watching the freshmen play. And so, you know, they, 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 you know our guys on defense didn't play very many snaps. So we got some freshness to us um, on defense. Uh, offensive guys played 60 snaps. Uh, which is not quite a full game, but more than you know, two and a half quarters would usually suggest. I think we played, I don't know, sixty some plays in the first half, uh, ninety altogether, ninety something altogether. But um, I, I don't think we spent a lot of emotion last Saturday. I, I, I just don't. Um, but on the flip side, I will tell you, BYU was a fourth four quarter for the most part emotional, um, you know, rivalry type of game and. We played well the next week. So I, I, I don't buy into that because, to me, uh, it's about uh, going right back to fundamentals and how we practice and how we prepare and we respect our opponent and we respect our opponent by how we prepare and how we practice. And so I expect that to be at a high level this week. Uh, any further comment on Jordan Love getting another conference player of the week on her? Uh, you know, again, um, I'm very happy for Jordan. He played very well. He threw some really nice balls. Um, he continues to be calm and uh, very um, composed at the line of scrimmage. With the clock winding down, he's making checks. He's making protection checks. Um, he, he's, he's handled it all really well. But Al, um, I, I also think it is a direct reflection of the guys around him. Uh, he, um, you know, we handled uh, San Jose pressure just a little bit more than a lot of teams have. Um, our, guy, our O line protected. Uh, we ran the ball well. Our running backs caught the ball very well. Uh, we continue to make catches all around him. So um, that's part of the quarterback's job, I think, is to inspire and invoke uh, a performance of the 10 guys around him that is a little bit better than they can um, usually play because of their confidence in the quarterback. But I also think the quarterback, um, you know, plays better because of the guys around him too. So I think it's, I think you kind of have it on both sides. And um, I think they, the weekly honor is a reflection of the offense. Another uh, thousand yard receiver there in Fort Collins, uh, Watt 
Um, Williams is a, he's a man. I mean, he looks like a grown man on tape. Uh, it's an SEC receiver, obviously, but he is playing at a high, high level. He's an NFL type kid, tremendous hands, speed, um, very good route runner. He's coached by a very good receiver coach. The guys coach some good receivers. Um, and he's, he's the next in line. He is a very talented young man who we better know where he is on the field every single snap. What do you see in their quarterback change that they've gone from more yeah. skill now rather than this? Yeah, and you know, we played Colin a couple years ago and saw him on tape uh, when he was younger. And um, I, I got a lot of respect for him, um, respect how he's come back from the, the both knee injuries. Um, he's big, he's strong, he's an athletic young man. Coach Izzy Matthews had a pretty big game last year against you guys. What do you see in him out of film from him this year? What makes him so difficult to stop? Izzy, Izzy is compact. He runs behind his uh, shoulder pads. Um, and when I say that, that means he's got a low center of gravity. Um, he continues to run and, and get his knees up. Um, you know, I think Darwin is similar to him, but on contact, he, he, he accelerates on contact. Um, he's thick, he's strong, strong lowers. He's a good player. Josh Watson's all over the place, makes every single tackle you see on tape. Uh, been a very consistent player for them over the years and another guy I got a lot of respect for. Are they struggling with their defense, do you think, the last couple of games? Well, I mean, if you take last week, you look at Nevada. Nevada's, Nevada's a talented offense. They got a quarterback playing pretty good and they got some receivers playing pretty good. They got a, a good, Nevada's got some good skill. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, watching them first on TV um, about a month ago, you kind of see that. But um, they, you know, I think uh, you look at Colorado State, they got a young D line. They're very talented. I mean, I think there's a couple true freshmen in there, excuse me, t true sophomores and a true freshman. Uh, the sophomores played against us last year. They're thick and strong young men. Um, Josh Watson all over the place. Fogel's a really good safety. Um, you know, they got a true freshman starting a corner that, he does some stuff, and I haven't seen all their stuff right now at Monday. But um, he made a couple of plays. Just knowing he's a true freshman, I'm like, that's a young Jalen Davis out there. Um, and for those of you that don't know, that's a high compliment. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, so they've got they've I mean, got some good four. talent. And, number four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ajayi. Yeah. Georgia kid. Have you? Have you in any way talked to Coach Bobo about his physical stuff? You know, I, I, Coach Bobo and I had a conversation. Um, I think um, it, we were, it was about the middle of training camp to maybe the beginning of training camp. I reached out to Mike. I've known Mike since uh, Mike was at Georgia and I was at Louisville the first time I, I met uh, Mike on the road recruiting. Mike's been a really good friend of me for right around 10 years. and. And I've known him, so I did. I reached out to him, and and we've texted a, a couple times. And you know, I hope he's uh, I hope he's got it figured out and and um, settled. Up. You know, your health is is just so important, um, not only physically but but mentally. And I know Mike, um, you know, grinds a lot and cares a lot about that program and putting his stamp on it. And I have a lot of respect for him, and certainly hope he's he's okay. Coach, preseason, preseason, you picked fifth in the in the division, and now you're. What does it say about the squad that they've been able to focus on their own expectations and to, to exceed everyone else's? Yeah, great question. Um, I think it says a lot about our, our player leadership. I think it says a lot about um, how we've developed our players because obviously a lot of the experts didn't think we were real good um, or we've been doing very much behind the scenes. Um, but. You know, you, it's 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 hard to predict, and coaches and players aren't in the prediction business. And our guys have certainly, um, I think, bought into this culture. You know, our plan to win, our core values, and um, they. Uh, I think some of the guys that have been around here for a few years, um, you know, understand that culture doesn't just um, um, it doesn't just show up every single year. There's a way you do things, and. I think there for you know maybe a year, year and a half, um, we were kind of crossing our fingers and living off of previous teams a little bit. 
um, and uh, you go through a little bit of a dip um, in that in terms of your culture and maybe some of your player leadership lost a lot of assistance to to jobs that paid them a whole lot more money than here at Utah State um, that's another factor in it um, and uh, you know after that 2016 season I mean we you know I I said the thing that that we did is we just uncovered every single stone in this program on and in terms of everything and flipped it over from recruiting to our culture to our goals and our expectations and how we recruit and how we develop how we practice and quite frankly a vast majority of it stayed the same but it gave you some introspection or um I don't know. I'm gonna quit using words. Uh, yeah, is that right? Is that, I said it. I boy, I hesitated there for a second. One, um, it just gives you a great insight into why you're doing stuff. It's more the why, um, and I think those whys were right. I made the 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 change. You know, um, changed some coaches and and made a complete change on offense. And and um, you know, we quietly recruited very very well. And these. These guys have come in and done a nice job, but we've developed them the right way, Dave Scholes and his staff. And the guys that are making um, plays right now that have not been here very long have come in and added to the culture. And I'm just, I'm so proud of them. But I think, um, you know, kind of continuing to answer that question is, you know, we have our own expectations internally. And I've always said they're higher than anybody else can put on us. And obviously the outside world didn't put um, very high expectations on us and you don't really use that as as an emotional motivation because at some point that's going to wear off and your habits and your discipline is going to kick in and your toughness and I think so much of that's developed in the off season from January you know all the way through July and then quite frankly those predictions come out in July so it doesn't matter right How did and I already know where we're going to be predicted right <laughs> next year I'll already you may start predicting it right now I already know where we're going to be picked you know, you have a returning quarterback and you're going to finish where we're going to finish, which is competing for a championship, and it's, which is what we're doing this week, right? Uh, we're going to be first or second league. I can already predict it. And so and then everybody's going to have to answer, ask me about returning. And you're losing all these old linemen. And I mean, you know, I mean, I'll write the script for y'all. <laughs> all right, we're off tag. Go ahead. Andrew, played. Andrew played well. Andrew played well. Contrary to me yelling at him and everybody in the stadium could hear me because everybody had gone home. He was just loose with the ball. It's just a ball security issue. I was pleased with Andrew. I thought he played well. He can run the ball. You guys saw that. Um, he handled the stage. That was his uh, first, you know, third time he's played, but first significant playing time. And he, him knowing he was going in. So there's a, there's a different mindset for you, knowing if you get a chance to, to get to that point in the game he was going in. I was proud of him. I thought he ran well and did a nice job. You know, it really wasn't running our normal offense because I made him, you know, milk the clock. And he handled that really good. That's something that you know, most freshmen don't have to come in and do. You have to be a little bit more of a veteran. So I thought Andrew played well. Andrew's got a bright future. I'm, I'm excited about coaching Andrew. you got an interesting situation at quarterback right now. We've got some good got players. Them. Yeah, we've got good players. David Yost coaches them up very, very good. Um, but um, Jordan and, and Henry and, and Andrew, I think of all – um, shown that they can play. Obviously, one of them's played the lion's share of reps, but they're all uh, talented quarterbacks. Coach, I want to ask you about the video that went viral of you delivering a game ball to Steve Wiley. Uh, can you talk about your thoughts on, uh, on what Steve does for this program and kind of behind the scenes yeah. stuff and what that meant for you to do it? Steve Wiley is one of the senior um, veteran glue guys. He's kind of the glue. He keeps it all together. Um, he is a uh, bridge or a liaison to the players that have played here in the past, including myself. Um, he knows everybody in Cache Valley. He knows everybody at Utah State, and he knows every single player, walk-on, scholarship, starter, backup that's ever, you know, worn the, the Aggie blue. And um, I've got a lot of respect for that man. He bleeds Aggie blue um, as much as anybody around here and um, you know he always teases with me he's already bought his plot he's when he gets buried he's going to be right up here at the cemetery and it's going to be facing Maverick Stadium I mean the guy is Utah State Aggie through and through and you know I tell you what here's how you can tell 
the respect that he has from people in this program. At the end of the game in the locker room, I told our players, there's only going to be one game ball this week, and I'm going to take it to Steve Wiley. And you should have seen every one of them are like, yep, no doubt, no brainer. So Coach DeMooney and I and our families got to go in and present it to him. And um, I just think it was a small, simple gesture that just, it wasn't done to go viral. It was done to show a guy what, what he means to us. Also, so. Chucky Keaton uh, tried to race, uh, was it Bright or Green, where we were downfield on uh, the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> What's Chucky Keaton meant to uh, this program and his kind of coaching here and, and to Jordan Love and to the offense? Uh, Chucky's a bright young coach that's got a bright future in this profession. Um, he's another guy that's Utah State Aggie through and through um, that uh, was always and has always been. Obviously, I got a chance to coach him, one of my favorites to ever coach. Because uh, uh, he did it all right. Um, not perfect, but he did it all right. I mean, he cared. Care factor was off the chain. And um, his ability to retain knowledge is one of the best I've ever been around. It was fun coaching him. It was a challenge to coach him. Um, watch him grow up right in front of your eyes. And then now he's a, he's a young graduate assistant that uh, I think the, a lot of the players can relate to. Um, he's got street cred. Um, his picture's on the wall around here. I probably need to take it down. Um, but he is a very confident and a very humble young man that um, is a good young coach and needs to quit running up and down the sidelines like you saw him. Yeah.